If you've seen any of my monster reviews before, you'll likely have seen me use my Datacolor Spider 5 to check out how well those monsters do with colors out of the box. But since Datacolor sent me their Spider X, I thought this would be a good time to talk about color calibrators, why you should color calibrate your monitor, why you might want one of these, and generally what they actually do. And as a quick heads up, this video is not sponsored by Datacolor or anyone else, although you could say that it's sponsored by titanbeauty.co.uk slash merch if you want to pick up, say, one of these three new stylish designs, but otherwise let's go talk about the color calibrator. So first, let's talk about what it does. You can think of the hardware side of this, the actual sensor, as kind of like a camera. And especially now that Datacolor use a lens system in the Spider X, that parallel is even easier to draw. Essentially what happens is you have a bit of software on your PC that will show a color on screen and then the hardware, the sensor, will basically take a picture of what that color is and what that color actually comes out to on your display and then it can work out what the difference between the color that it thinks you're showing and it's actually being shown to you and then create a profile so that it can effectively correct those differences. Now that doesn't inherently make your display infinitely better, it doesn't mean your panel can now display all of the colors in the world, it just means that the colors you see on screen are actually the colors that your computer is trying to show you. Right, so that's what it is, now why would you want one? Well, specifically if you're a video or photo editor or even do stuff like 3D modeling and especially texturing and adding materials, that can be a pretty big deal because your monitor might not be calibrated out of the factory and even if it is calibrated, those calibrations can wander over time. So if you have an older monitor, you're even less likely to be seeing the right colors on screen. Now it's not going to be anything drastic like when you uh, the computer says you should see red, you see blue. It's not anything that bad, but it can be subtle differences. And especially if you're doing stuff like photo editing, for example, and you've just edited a, a really nice photo you took and you want to have it printed so you can hang it up on your wall but you know if your monitor isn't calibrated some of those colors you could be seeing actually aren't the ones that you'll end up with on your printed out version. The same can be said for video too. Now it does depend on what you're doing and especially if you're in the more professional side of things having a color calibrator can be actually a very necessary thing to have and generally speaking if you're in the more creative fields anyway it can just be useful to have one around. Now why would you want a Spider X specifically? Well, there are a couple of reasons. First is actually its price. At the time of filming, at least in the UK, on Amazon, all that jazz, the Pro version is £110 and the Elite version, which is actually the same hardware, it just has a software upgrade that lets you color calibrate projectors as well, that one is £169. Now that does sound like a lot to, to the untrained ear and I was one of those ears a couple of years ago but that's actually incredibly cheap for what you get and the, the functionality. A good comparator is the i3 Color Monkey which I think is £178 right now so seems like good value. Next is just how incredibly fast it is. From start to finish, from plugging it in to unplugging it again, it took just a couple minutes to color calibrate my AOC 24 GTU, which to give you context, my Spider 5 using Display Cal took, it normally takes a couple hours to calibrate and test a display, which is a significant difference and can be the difference between just plugging it in, doing it quickly, rather than trying putting it off for months at a time and then ending up with uh, kind of a, an uncalibrated display for a lot longer than you'd like. And finally, it's ease of use. Seriously, this thing is incredibly simple to set up and use. You All you do is plug it in, you install the software, and then you click which type of monitor you have, change the brightness to whatever it recommends, and then let it run for literally a minute, and then you'll be good to go. It saves your profile. You can actually save individual profiles for each monitor and each calibration, so you can load older ones as well, and it just makes it really simple. Also has reminders to remind you to recalibrate your display. I think it's once a month, which again, if you're in the more professional space, is actually pretty handy to have. So would I buy one? Would I put one on my desk? I think the fact that I paid my own money for the Spider 5 a couple years ago should probably tell you that yes, I would. 
The fact that it's now the same price or actually cheaper than the older Spider 5s is a great incentive and something that I'm very happy to recommend considering how fast it is, how reasonably accurate it seems to be, and generally speaking, how much functionality you get with this. Seems like a pretty much no-brainer, especially for the creative space and even for the enthusiast as well, might be a good option to have around. So with all of that said, those are my thoughts that I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the Spider X? Would you pick it up yourself? I know a few people in the Discord were already talking about the Spider 5, so would you be interested in picking up one of these? Anything at all, let me know in those comments down below. Of course, if you want to see more videos like this one or more PC gaming tech normally, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more videos every Monday. Wednesday and Friday. You can also check out the links in the description. There is one to the Spider X. It is an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to your local Amazon store and you can see pricing when and where you watch this because it can and does vary. There's also a load of other links down there too from Amazon and over a clock chic affiliate links which don't cost you anything to use but massively help me out when you use them. Or merch like I mentioned for hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other designs and stuff like Streamlabs OBS if you want to start streaming and a load of other stuff there too. You can also check out some more videos over there, maybe some monitor reviews, see how they do. And that is pretty much it. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below and we'll see y'all in the next video.